the two largest economic powers of the world, China and United States, competing in silence for economic control and spreading political influence on the world by two huge projects. First, let's unflood the The Chinese Project, Belt and Road Initiative. The participating countries in the BRI include almost 75% of the world's population and account for more than half of the world's GDP. In more than 150 countries and international organizations. The journey began in 2013 in Kazakhstan during a visit of the Chinese leader, Xi Jinping. We should take an innovative approach and jointly build an economic belt along the Silk Road. When he mentioned the 2,000 years old ancient Silk Road connecting China with the Middle East and Europe. It consists of two main components, the Silk Road Economic Belt and the new Maritime Silk Road. The infrastructure development strategy includes roads, rails, ports, creating new links and making the trade network denser. However, trade data show that China's exports, particularly of infrastructure-related goods, had started flowing to Belt and Road Corridor economies for a decade before the official launch of the initiative. Notably, 17 European Union countries and 8 G20 nations are part of this initiative. Estimates for Chinese investment in the Belt and Road Initiative range from use $1 trillion to use $8 trillion. In 2017, the Middle East and North Africa witnessed a surge in exports, with Saudi Arabia and the UAE leading the charge, each contributing over $200 billion. Meanwhile, Djibouti, Syria, and Yemen face challenges, experiencing negative export growth due to conflict. Trade data reveals the corridor economies became a vital destination for Chinese exports, accounting for 40% of China's merchandise exports in 2017, up nearly 9% since 2001. If all BRI transport infrastructure projects are completed, aggregate trade costs for corridor economies could decrease by 2.8% globally and 3.5% within the corridor itself. Trade costs falling by 10% along the China Central Asia West Asia Economic Corridor. It's not just about economic giants. Even smaller players benefit. Tanzania's Bagamoyo port, for example, not only benefits Tanzania but has positive spillover effects on neighboring sub-Saharan African countries. Through strategic initiatives like the Belt and Road Initiative, Beijing has achieved a significant diplomatic victory, extending its reach far beyond physical connections. In the ambitious landscape of the Belt and Road Initiative, where bridges and roads connect nations, there lie challenges that demand our attention. Let's delve into the complexities that underscore the BRI narrative. Number one policy barriers that create thick borders. In BRI countries, delays at borders, intricate customs procedures, and restrictions on foreign direct investment create significant hurdles. Central Asia, for instance, faces up to 50 days of procedures for importing goods, compared to less than 10 days in G7 countries. Policy reform and cooperation are essential to complement infrastructure projects and boost true connectivity. Next up, risks associated with major infrastructure projects. Environmental, social, and corruption risks loom large, especially in countries with weaker governance. The financing required for BRI projects could strain countries' debt levels to unsustainable heights. The construction of projects like the Kunming Singapore Railway in Laos, estimated at nearly 40% of the country's GDP, raises concerns. Balancing development needs with the vulnerabilities created by increased debt becomes a delicate act. Now, a shadow looms over the BRI, the specter of debt trap diplomacy. China, having become the world's largest international creditor, grapples with the aftermath of BRI debts. From Sri Lanka to Kenya, countries face challenges, leading to accusations of Beijing engaging in debt trap diplomacy. The true scale of the debt, shrouded in secrecy, has sparked concerns. Restructuring loans, extending deadlines, and significant financial aid from China have been offered, but debt cancellation remains elusive. Critics argue that this debt diplomacy tarnishes China's reputation, leading to fears of undermining others' sovereignty, as respond for the the Silk Road Economic Belt. At the G20 summit in New Delhi, launched India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor, backed by the US, Saudi Arabia, the EU, and the UAE. We need to maximize the impact of our investments. That's why a few months ago I announced that the United States will work with our partners to invest in economic corridors. In practice, it means we're focusing on regional infrastructure projects that deliver results across 
multiple countries and in multiple sectors. Crafted by Israeli former chief economist Shira Greenberg, the EMEC envisions a seamless journey for trucks from Dubai to Israel's Haifa port, backed by the US, Saudi Arabia, the EU, and the UAE, aims to create a trade land bridge, accelerating trade between India and Europe by up to 40%. The proposed route promises to save up to 80% of transit time, providing a competitive edge. Yet, the future of the IMEC hangs in the balance, caught between geopolitical intricacies, regional conflicts, and economic considerations. A few years ago, I stood here with a red marker to show the, the curse, a great curse, the curse of a nuclear Iran. But today, Today I bring this marker to show a great blessing, the blessing of a new Middle East between Israel, Saudi Arabia, and our other neighbors. We will not only bring down barriers between Israel and our neighbors, we'll build a new corridor of peace and prosperity that connects Asia through the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, to Europe. The Middle East's instability, marked by conflicts and rugged terrains, poses technical limitations. Amidst these considerations, the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict adds complexity to the project. Comparisons with China's Belt and Road Initiative arise, emphasizing the IMEX $20 billion estimation against the backdrop of skepticism about feasibility and potential geopolitical repercussions. The Western world and India integral players in the IMEC, grapple with the challenge of excluding China due to significant investments in member sectors. And the IMEC faces roadblocks with the Israeli aggression on in Gaza and rising anti-Israel sentiments, stalling developments. Jordan navigates between supporting Palestine and maintaining ties with Israel, adding uncertainties. As powerful nations vie for control over strategic routes, the IMEC stands at a crossroads. Will it become a transformative reality or remain an ambitious vision?